Okay. Starting now. Okay, so we have uh, episode two today. Hi, Scott. Hello, how are you? See, I'm, I'm just waiting to see the video. Yeah, so we are live now, so you don't have to see it anymore. <laughs> Sorry, guys, everybody. Um, Scott is still trying to figure this out. So I, I'm with, new to computers. I, I'm dealing with that whole computer thing. I'm, I'm, a, I'm an acoustic guitar player, so technology isn't necessarily my strongest point. <laughs> okay, hello. so, 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 hello, hello. We're just uh, waiting everybody to kind of join us. Yes. But, but Scott, I really advise you not to look at the Facebook um, video. No, no, I, I way ahead of you, way, or way behind you, I guess I should say. Um, <laughs> absolutely. You know, yeah. it, that, that is, that is, it is disorienting for sure. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just uh, trying to grab the, well, okay. 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 So, so um, my name is Chika Inoue and I'm a saxophone player. We're here um, with Chika and Scott as a saxophone and guitar duo. And this is our week two of, you know, we thought we would have a little chat about us and about how we get our musical <laughs> life together on this yeah. chat. Yeah. Yeah, hey, I'm Scott, um, guitar player, uh, and uh, half of half of the duo. Um, today we're going to be talking about just playing music with with other instrumentalists, with other musicians. Um, you know, whether it be a guitar and saxophone, or you know, guitar quartet, or you're maybe just playing chamber music of any kind. Maybe you're not a classical musician at all. Maybe you know you play in a band. Um, could be a lot of different things. So. Uh, yeah, that's 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 what's on uh, tap for today, and you know we hope to have uh, an interesting conversation. Great. So, um, now, if I could just figure out how to share the link on my other Facebook pages, I would be super happy, and I could move on. Oh, do you, do you want me to send you the link? You know, you really need to you really need to link your iMessage onto your computer. It makes my life so much easier. Yeah. <laughs> I I know. I pur I purposely disable it. And uh I'm sure that's a terrible idea. <laughs> okay. Well, let me share it on my page. Um let's see. Bear with us for a second, because uh, we're still figuring this out. Week two. Yeah. yeah. So I'm very excited that um, the CD, the, the actual physical CD from Scud, you sent, I don't know how long ago was that? It took like a uh, week or maybe even less than a week. I was so excited when I received 150 cd of us sent yeah to japan yeah I, you know um the post office said because of the shutdown they couldn't guarantee when it might get there so they said it could take as long as a month so i was really nervous about that yeah i think so it only took our, like four or five days i think which was yeah, impressive. I, yeah which is which is great because we paid for the seven to ten day service so it was better than they thought so i guess they knew it was important and uh, <laughs> you know good good for them yeah yeah so, so yeah, I'm excited. Um, we have our CD coming up on the 16th of October. Uh, yeah, we're already in October in Japan. By the way, I'm, I'm streaming from Japan. Scott is in Los Angeles. And I, yeah, um, I've been in Japan since March and our duo has been apart you know, <laughs> since well, the COVID. It, 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 well, at least in a geographical sense, but we've yeah. been, you know, as we talked about last week, you know, we've been, uh, very productive here in the shutdown and the pandemic and the travel ban, uh, whatever you want to call it, wherever you are in the world and however this is affecting you. Um, you know, we've, we've seen it all <laughs> for sure, but, right. um, yeah, you just want to stay productive and keep going and right. uh, that helps keep you positive. 
Right, right, right. Exactly. So um, I'm very excited we get to uh, distribute these CDs and sell these, sell it and have people listen to us. So it's very exciting. So today we're going to be talking about playing music with others. What does that mean, Scott? <laughs> well, you know, the guitar, the classical guitar um, is very often a solo instrument. And, you know, the, the typical experience for sort of a college classical guitar student, um, you know, they, they spend a lot of time in their practice room alone. You know, they probably grew up um, practicing a lot at home alone. And then you get to college and you're told you have to, you know, play in guitar ensemble and things like that. You're like, what are you talking about? Um, that's, that's, you know, for, for classical guitar, because, you know, classical guitar players, I know a lot, many, including myself, started on uh, non-classical guitar. And you probably played in bands and things like that. And, and that's a very similar sort of thing. Well, you were um, in a rock band, right, Scott? I was, yeah, we, we, <laughs> we, we, we were doing pretty well. That's uh, actually what brought me to Hollywood, California. Mm. Um, yeah, back when I was all of 17 years old. Can you believe my parents let me move to Hollywood, California when I was 17 on my own? Yeah. Terrible, terrible, <laughs> irresponsible. Um, <laughs> and you had a long blonde hair, right? I, I did. <laughs> I, I did. I did. Yeah, I was very, very cool, um, which you'd never guess in a million years now, I yeah. suppose. Yeah. But um, so, you know, playing music with, with, you know, people in a band, something like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, classical guitar players, you know, we, we aren't really brought up like violinists or cellists where, you know, you play in, you know, youth orchestra and you go to band camp like you do with saxophone and, right. you know, play in marching band and pep band and, you know, all these different things. You know, we're the weirdos who like stay in our room all the time and, you know, are super awkward going out and socializing. At least, you know, that's how a lot of uh, at, at, least, at least you guys can, you know, sit at like a nice scenery, like, you know. I, no, it's I true. Know. And then you can just just, just keep working on your techniques. <laughs> yeah, no, the, the, yeah, the associate dean of, of our college, he said, were you that guy who sat on campus as a student just playing guitar outside all the time? I go, yeah. And he goes, I hated that guy. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, I, it, you get you get that benefit for sure, which is uh, which is a lovely perk, um, mm -hmm. no no doubt. But um, yeah, you know, but when you when you start playing music in ensemble, a uh, guitar ensemble or whatever it might be, sometimes it's pretty awkward because you're not used to playing with others as far as a classical instrument goes. And and then when you get into playing with other instruments, you know, flute, saxophone, whatever, uh, you know, uh, then the dynamics completely change. Mm. So, yeah, if, if you're a young classical guitar player, I highly recommend, um, you know, finding as many different musical experiences as possible by playing with as diverse a group of, of musicians as you possibly can. Well, there are guitar quartets and ensembles, right? Oh, yeah, of course. Um, that, that, as a USC um, undergrad, um, where the many members of the Los Angeles guitar, well, half of the LA Guitar Quartet, um, teaches and um, there's sort of a history there from from Pepe Romero, from of course Los Romeros, the guitar quartet. There's a there's a lot of guitar quartet mm -hmm. in the just in the air around USC. So um, yeah, I was fortunate enough to actually be a member of the USC guitar quartet, um, which is sort of a standing group every year at USC. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I really loved really loved uh, playing in that because you know the LAGQ, those guys were kind of my heroes and it was it was fun we played a lot of their rep and all of mm -hmm. that so mm -hmm. yeah cool well for saxophone well, classical saxophone my maybe jazz saxophone experience is a little bit different but for classical saxophone you know we can be in like you said marching band and wind ensemble uh once in a blue moon in the orchestra um when when well you you, you know. play in a pretty good orchestra now <laughs> i'm very fortunate about that i yeah i've been sitting in as a saxophone player in the los angeles philharmonic but um it, it's you know the opportunity is extremely extremely very little um 
compared to, you know, of course, other wind instruments where they can have their seats all the time. So right. classical saxophone is we have to be really creative about it. Although there are lots of music written for saxophone and piano, lots, lots of chamber works, um, uh, saxophone and orchestra, which is a concerto. Um, th yeah, there's a quite a few of those. So, you know, when I was going through college, I basically learned all the repertoire, like what's considered to be the, the standard, <laughs> especially when I was a um, undergrad. Uh, going into the master's program. Um, but yeah, it was about, you know, learning the repertoires one after another and playing with the pianist and um, basically chamber music. So maybe with considering the guitar uh, experience where you are practicing by yourself and playing your solo repertoire, maybe as a sa classical saxophonist, we have more experience playing with others. Yeah. And yeah. No, for sure. Um yeah, I I never once, well, okay, I'm not gonna say never once because um, you know when when you were learning a concerto, um, you bring a an accompanist to your your lesson, um, but it's it's very common uh, for a, a melodic instrument like a saxophone or a violin or a flute um, to have an accompanist in the studio there um, mm -hmm. with you with your teacher in the lesson, and you're you're playing with people all the time and you're listening. Mm -hmm. um, guitar players were just just there all by ourselves just playing alone mm -hmm. um like we usually do and mm -hmm. you know um guitar players my, myself um especially uh got really used to being able to be very flexible with this thing called tempo um <laughs> so you know i mean you know one person's rushing is another person's a cello rondo um but uh <laughs> Yeah, I had but, the uh, the great privilege of uh, coaching guitar ensembles in Granada last year in the CSU Summer Arts uh, guitar course, and I I found a lot of uh, I've noticed a lot of traits of what <laughs> classical guitarists like to do. <laughs> yes, and tend yes. to do. Yeah. Well, yeah, no, you you in a way you kind of just put a whole bunch of soloists in a quartet together. <laughs> and expect them to all play the same way and you know that's that's not always the way they, they think and that's not always the way it goes so um mm -hmm. one of one of the things that um playing chamber music has allowed me um and you know i love playing with chico you know we've been playing together for for several years now um and you know before that i, I played in quartets and trios and you know with flute and um even a piano that was a tricky one uh, just mm -hmm. as far as the volume goes, but uh, it it really keeps you honest when you're when you're playing with others. It, it really does. And mm -hmm. you know the the other thing um, that I I would always uh, you know say to to people when you're looking for partners to play music with is you know you never want to be the best musician in your group, um, or at least you don't want to feel like you're the best musician in your group. You you want to feel like playing with this person or with these people raises your level. Um, you know, you want to, you want to rise up to, to, to playing uh, with them. Um, you know, if, if you're an athlete, you don't want to be the, the best player on the team. Um, unless you're a really, really good player, you better be, you know, Kobe Bryant or something. Um, <laughs> but uh, you know, for, for, for most, you know, if you're the best player on the team, it may not be the team you want to be on. So mm. um, yeah, always, always look for, you know, always like to surround yourself with the most talented musicians you can possibly find. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it really, really raises your level. You play up to that level. Yeah. yeah and you always want to be a little bit uncomfortable too, just mm -hmm. a little mm -hmm. bit, not, not a lot because then you're mm -hmm. over your head. Yeah. But it, it, a little bit uncomfortable is actually a really good thing. Yeah. Uh, that's a great point. And you really have to be honest with each other too. Well, to be able to be, honest with each other when you're making music um but you know of course depending on who who you're working with um you might have to be careful what you say but um <laughs> that's true yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. you know um i i coached guitar ensemble for years i don't i don't do it now at my university because i've got uh matthew greif um from the la guitar quartet who, who works with me and you know you know, between me and him, I'd rather him coach the guitarist. He's doing a lot of guitar uh, quartet and things like that. David Isaacs too for guitar orchestra. But um, you know, I, I would always say to 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 the students in guitar 
ensemble who would come to me afterwards like, oh, I don't want to play with Bob anymore. Bob's a jerk. And, you know, he just dominates the rehearsal. And, you know, I just can't stand. I, I need to get out of there. I'm like, you know, I, we should find a way. So if you're at a college and you're taking guitar and something, you should also get like double units or something in like psychology or sociology or <laughs> Something like, something or conflict like that. management or something. Conflict management, <laughs> yeah, um, exactly. Because you know, you're, you're, you're you know, political science. I don't know. You're 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 just having to deal with other people, and you know, I some of the best groups in the world. I'm not going to name any names, but some of the best groups in the world don't get along at all. Mm. They don't travel together. They don't hang out mm. socially. Mm. Um, uh, a, a really well-known group. Who, again, I'm not going to name. Uh, they said, yeah, we never hang out together. And I said, why? I said, because we want to stay friends. Because <laughs> you you just, you see so much of each other and you're so, you know, bound. Yeah, but isn't it interesting how those are the moment that actually tells you who you are, like w in that uncomfortable moment. Those are the times oh. when, yeah, if everything is happy and uh, happy-go-lucky, it's, um it's it's an ideal situation, but at the same time, you feel so comfortable and peaceful. But it's always that moment, the tough moments <laughs> oh, yeah, and the no, rough I, moments that tells you who you are and how you react. And yeah, one of our yeah. first one of our first uh, travel experiences, um, I remember. I think we 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 flew to San Francisco, then we played in Sonoma. We went. Do we go to Sacramento? We may have San Jose for sure. Yeah, San Jose, Cap and Capitola, um, Fresno for Guitar Day there, Bakersfield. San Jose, yeah. San Jose, yeah. We had we had all these things, and you know, it lasted. It seemed like a pretty long time, and uh, yeah, I, I just remember by the time we were rolling into <laughs> Bakersfield or Fresno, um, it, it was just like you know, let's just we're, we're just going to deal with this. We're just going to get through it, and. Uh, I felt like, yeah, we were we were a lot stronger as a duo after that experience. But yeah, yeah. you gotta, yeah, you gotta, <laughs> you gotta spend some time together and make sure you can handle it. Yeah, yeah, and no I mean, professional groups. I mean, we're talking about <laughs> professional groups. Yeah, you know, if you're if you're a weekend warrior, that's totally cool. You don't have to go on the road if you don't want to. But uh, yeah, if you can't if you can't get along for extended periods of time, mm -hmm. in you know sometimes very boring. Uh, mm -hmm. situations and sometimes mm -hmm. very high pressure situations then mm -hmm. uh, you're not gonna last very long are you mm -hmm. yeah and i probably talk a lot to scott about music how how i want to hear the phrases especially because i, I was a pianist piano player um and we arrange a lot of music from you know piano or piano and like other instruments like a you know ch chamber um music so i have some ideas about you know piano music so i i probably talk to you a lot about oh you know that 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 no needs to be come out more and <laughs> yeah yeah no it, it's not like playing with a you know a, a, a flutist who's never played a harmonic instrument before um <laughs> No, I, yeah, I, no, I wish I knew how to play the guitar, but I don't. So I just say, you know, I want to hear that note better, or yeah, I want to hear that chord in this way or that way. I think that's a really good point that, that you raised because um, you you don't really care what's convenient on the guitar. Mm -hmm. um, in you know, that's a really good thing because you know there are a lot of times when we're working on an arrangement or we're playing something that we we've, we've already arranged. And I, you know, we're, as we, as we do, when, when we're rehearsing, talking about how to do this and how to do that, and, you know, we're making suggestions. And then, you know, the guitar, which is a particularly, you know, idiosyncratic instrument, you know, it's very, you know, <laughs> it, it just wants to be played the way it wants to be played. And, you know, mm -hmm. it just has a lot of quirks. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, you'll say something like, well, can you do this? And my, my, First, you know, answer would be no. I don't. I don't that's that's impossible. You can't. Do that. <laughs> and uh, but but then you know, you're like, give me a minute. You, you think about it and you find a way. Actually, and you know, I I think I think working with somebody who isn't a guitar player. Not not that there's anything wrong. There are many things great about playing guitar with other guitar players. But playing with somebody who actually doesn't care if that's a good fingering. They mm. don't care if that's not a good place to. You know, be you know, play forte. They don't care 
if this tempo is not your favorite, they don't care. They just, there's just a way you know, they want it to Simply, sound. Simply, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, and that, that sort of lack of knowing what's convenient yeah. um, is, is, is great because it, it forces the guitar player to think outside of their box where they wouldn't have necessarily thought of that because that's mm -hmm. not something that you would, you would choose to do voluntarily. Mm -hmm, <laughs> so, mm -hmm. so yeah, I, 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 I think that's another really good uh, perk to uh, playing with a non guitar player. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I, and Chica, I know uh, we were in Tucson performing and uh, half of the program, this is for the North American saxophone Alliance. Um, my, my parents thought it was really cool because I told them I was going to go play at NASA and uh, just, just, I just let that go. They didn't ask any follow-ups. So I was like, they're very proud of me. Um, but the uh, uh, half of the concert, you played with a, a saxophone quartet. Right. And I, I wonder if playing with other saxophonists is, you know, a less rewarding experience or more, you know, uh, just a different experience, what, whatever it might be, but mm -hmm. you're playing with people who, you know, they know all the fingerings, they have similar techniques. Um, you know, it's not like a guitar quartet where you've got four generally standard guitars. I mean, mm -hmm. you've got, a, you know, soprano and alto, you know, tenor, baritone, sax. So it's more like a, like a string quartet, something like that. Mm -hmm. But um, do you, do you find that experience to be really, really different? Um, yeah, I would think so. And also depends on who I play too. you know, that quartet was, um, it wasn't a quartet that we played for many years, we we came together and uh, rehearsed several times, so that we can perform at uh, the NASA in Tucson. Um, and, and I, you know, I, I, I know, I know them fairly well. And um, I really enjoyed working with them, but like well, the the comment about you're saying like everybody is saxophonist and knowing the fingerings and knowing the sound. Um, the um, it's it's interesting about saxophonist um, because we have been kind of trained, well, at least in an academic setting, to be a soloist. Basically, you know, it's always been no, it's a saxophone it, and piano. You know, yeah, and well, same thing with guitar. So. It's uh, it's very difficult to, <laughs> I, I don't know, I, maybe it's just me, but it feels different, difficult to um, kind of be like, listen to, listen to each other and like knowing who's has the lead and who, who should, who should blend in with this person and all that. It's, um, and maybe myself, I haven't had a whole lot of experience playing with a saxophone ensemble. I, I, ha I have done it in the past, but uh, it's not like I've done it like for many, many years, like consecutively with the same people. So um, you may not be talking to the the, <laughs> the right person, asking the right person about saxophone right, right. ensembles. But um, in general, when I play with saxophone players, um, I feel that the balancing is some sometimes an issue because um, we you know we we have to very we, we really have to listen to each other much closer as a saxophonist. And I'm not saying that um, we're not sensitive, but maybe we're not. If you're not, if you haven't done it a lot of times, then maybe you know you you have to train your ears to listen to others and. Uh, right hear each other yeah so i'm sure it's the same thing with the guitar players i've i've worked with the sax uh guitar ensemble and felt that they were so caught up with their fingerings caught up with their which fingers <laughs> to go <laughs> um their lines are so difficult you know and it it, it becomes so narrow narrow-minded but yeah, what I they actually should be doing is to listen to others yeah, I, I think a lot of guitar players, um, they're, they listen with their fingers mm -hmm. and that's not, uh, that, that, that's, that's not something you want to be doing, um, especially when you're playing with, with others. Um, and uh, I, think, I think when you play music with others, it also um, dramatically improves 
your solo playing. Um, it it really informs your solo playing. It, mm -hmm. um, especially a a you know say a guitar player who plays solo a lot. Um, boy, you learn so much about melody by playing mm -hmm. with a really good you know a singer you know a talented saxophonist like like I have um flute what you know violin whatever it might be but you know like a, like a melody specialist mm -hmm. um that that's a real plus mm -hmm. and uh yeah I, I i think uh playing with people that bring out you know the 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 best in you is mandatory and if you're not uh, mm -hmm. playing with those people well then, because guitar is Guitar is such a tedious <laughs> instrument, and um, it, it's, it's so, basically so worth it. So worth it. <laughs> um, it's an orchestra in in that whole guitar, and yeah, oh boy, the, there's so much going on. But sometimes I tell you, like Scott, actually, I'm I don't want to hear all those sixteenth notes. I just want to hear those like big. <laughs> quarter notes melody and you're like oh i didn't even know that that was a <laughs> that was a line. yeah, <laughs> and, yeah. yeah. When, when you don't want to hear those 16 sounds my response is usually great um <laughs> <laughs> rather not play them all um <laughs> no i i you know it, it's true it's about it's about orchestrating but, but i i tell i i tell i tell scott a terrible hear that 16 notes louder so i can hear it <laughs> yes yes yeah yeah, yeah, well, you know, when, when you're when you're when you're used to playing with professional accompanists, um, it, it uh, definitely changes the expectations. And yeah, you know. well, I I don't like to call um, a pianist I play with as an accompanist. I like to call them um, collaborative um, artists or collaborative pianist. Um, collaborative but, pianist. I I apologize. No, no, no. But um, you know, playing with another piano player. I, I got to learn so much out of it too. Mm -hmm. And um, things things that I never thought I would find out if I were just looking at my saxophone part. Because that's that's what we uh, read off from, just a single single line, yeah, well, single saxophone part. And there's no piano part written up. Yeah, like you know, I, so, I get a lot of... Um, but my... Um, Oh, was I gone for a second? You, you um, know, yeah, it, you're you're back. Hello? You're I'm welcome. Back. Yeah, yeah. So Mary Al, I played with, with her for many years, and I, hopefully, I I do when I get back to LA. Um, she made me write all the piano part, you know, especially like the rhythmic things or the lines or things like that, um, where I should be paying attention to. <laughs> and um, at first I was really like, oh no, this is like so much work. But at the end, that was a, that was a time saver because I, my ears were, you know, were going to the piano, listening to that. And having that note on my the uh, saxophone part it really helps me you know get to know the music and yeah um, yeah takes take, yeah. took me to another level i think yeah yeah well mm -hmm. you know if, if when i see a when i see a musician with a score that doesn't have any marks on it um i really question what kind of preparation they did unless they're a mm -hmm. mad genius and it's all up here but <laughs> uh yeah my my scores look bonkers crazy mm -hmm. just as yeah. far as like how much stuff is written in and Oh, yeah. yeah, I actually like to have um, the the saxophone part or the the if I'm playing a duo, I like to have the other part in front of me. Um, mm -hmm. You know, what, that actually you know maybe people would be interested to to know what kind of setup we use for you know reading our scores. Um, you know, we've both got uh, we've got these gigantic iPads. Um, what, this is the eight and a half by eleven iPad. It's like the super. Yeah, yeah, there's yours. <laughs> here's mine. Yeah. Um, and uh, here, let me see if I can. So we've got our yeah. our music here. Mm -hmm. And yeah, just everything, if you can see that. But, you know, we've got this thing called four score. And if you just, you yeah. know, tap here. Yeah. There, but we also have these Bluetooth pedals which are really cool because you know a lot of the music we play something mm -hmm. like you know the schubert arpeggione 
Mm-hmm. Um, you, you really, it's, it's a really hard piece to memorize. I don't know anybody other than, you know, Schiff, um, who's, who's memorized it. I'm sure somebody can correct me and name somebody, but I don't know anybody. Um, it's uh, pretty, pretty, pretty hard to do. Uh, and, you know, it's 50 pages, 60 pages of score. And you can't just sit there and I'm always impressed by pianists, how they can just like go bang and just change the page like that. And, you know, I, I, I could never do that. I'm too chicken. Um, but uh, yeah, the, the, the iPad with, with the app four score uh, with a Bluetooth foot pedal is just the thing um, for, for us. Works really, really well. Um, and, you know, the other thing that's really nice about uh, having something like, a, like an iPad um, you can have all of your scores there. So, you know, there's never, you know, the excuse of, oh, I, I didn't know we were going to be working on that. Or, <laughs> you know, I didn't bring that score with me or my dog yeah. ate my homework. It, it's no, it's all there <laughs> all the time. You know, jazz, a lot of jazz musicians, they have all the, the real books and things like that all loaded in there. So it's kind of yeah. cool. You can walk around with a gigantic music library um, in, your, in your bag, which, yeah. is, which is great. Yeah, and Scott and I, we share a Dropbox, so we can constantly um, share our music and update our music. And, um, you know, if it was in a, like a written form, we would have to scan it and we would have to, you know, do a couple steps in order to like send each other music. So, yeah, with this technology, iPad, using iPad and using Dropbox, it really has been a, a life changing yeah. Game changing, <laughs> excuse me. Game changing experience yeah, for yeah. us. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm really paranoid about mine. I, I don't have anything on there except for score. I I don't uh, I don't use it for anything else. It's just just for the music, mm-hmm. you know, just uh, just in case, you know. Um, but uh, I don't know. I mean, I guess if you're a little bit more brave than me, you could be checking your email during rehearsal and <laughs> playing Candy Crush and things like that. That's <laughs> Please don't. No, no, I'm listening to you. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> no, I, I, I don't. Um, but, yeah. No, but to have it hooked up to Dropbox is great because, you know, you can actually mm-hmm. share scores um, with somebody right there on the spot mm-hmm. as well. Um, so if you have an updated arrangement or something like that, it's great. You can just, um, oh, okay, I put the new one in Dropbox. And, yeah. You know, you get it right there because Dropbox yeah. is how I get the scores, the four score, mm-hmm. which, which yeah. works. That's yeah, right. Great. I think. Yeah, and I moved all my um, data onto Dropbox now in my computer, so I can access all my data from my iPhone to iPad to any devices. If I if I'm out and I if I don't have any of my devices, which is very rare, uh, mm-hmm. if I have to print those music out, if I have to um share those right. music, yeah, it's it's it has become very well. Easy. You know, it, God forbid you you lose your iPad or, you know, you, you pack it for a trip and it gets destroyed by, you know, United Airlines or, or, you know, it just dies and something like that. If you have everything backed up in, in Dropbox, yeah. um, just go, you know, borrow a, another iPad, go pick up some, go pick up a new one, mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. you know, set up your four score. You've got all your scores right there. Um, right. It's, it's great. So you've got everything backed up. Um, which you know I, I think is wonderful and you know we've got mm-hmm. the apple pencils so we can mm-hmm. we can annotate mm-hmm. the scores things like yeah. that so yeah also yeah. also very very cool and sometimes yeah. i you know it's funny i you know we play acoustic guitar and, and saxophone and sometimes we're just i feel like we're totally surrounded by all of these electronics um I, <laughs> it uh you know got the ipad in front of you you've got the bluetooth foot pedal um in order to play with saxophone, um, the classical guitar really uh, can't be uh, completely without amplification. And, um, you know, trust me, I tried. I, I tried everything I could to not amplify. Uh, I think we yeah. even played a couple of performances where we tried to get away yeah, with Yeah, or the not. first few, like the either the amp didn't work or the microphone didn't work or, you know, it, things yeah, always yeah. happen. Yeah, and then the every the first few, uh, we were still figuring out which amps to use, the microphone to use, the setup. Right. So yeah, well, I was making the mistake of using an acoustic guitar amp for classical guitar mm-hmm. um, with with a microphone, not a pickup, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Um, it just doesn't work. You get a lot of low end hums. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, God help you if you play an A 
Um, yeah, and it, you, you it, had the it, microphone where you you have your hands, so you kept you, you hit, hitting you hit on the, it. <laughs> yeah, it, it, there there were all sorts of problems. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, we 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 tried a whole bunch of different things. So I I started out with an AER, which is a German amp, which is which is great. It's the Tommy Emanuel model. And if you're playing steel string and you've got a pickup um, in there, highly recommended. It's great, but it doesn't work so well with a classical guitar and a and a and a microphone. And then I, you know, just moved over. I got away from amplifiers and started using powered speakers. So, you know, picked up a little Mackie uh, before uh, a performance we did with with orchestra. And we were playing with Iceola. Um, was that on Good Friday or Easter? Or, I don't know. It was a holiday. I don't remember which one. But um, anyway, we we're doing our, our our famous Ave Maria. Uh, with with orchestra, very cool. You can find it on our YouTube page, the rehearsal uh, for that. But um, yeah, what happened at that one? I think I I turned I turned the amp on off. No, off. you turned it off. No. I turned it off. Oh, and I remember. Okay, so I turned it I I turned it off after sound check, and mm -hmm. then it sat there on stage, and I didn't know that the sound engineer turned it back on just before we got out there because i was expecting to plug in and then turn it on so like a like a moron i didn't even look i just hit the power button i turned it off and we ended up playing <laughs> the entire thing uh yeah. with, orchestra, with no amplification whatsoever yeah um, and oftentimes and when we're on stage we, we can't hear can't, what can't the tell. audience is hearing so yeah for yeah. the whole time scott had it off yeah, I did. But you know, unfortunately, <laughs> because of the, the acoustics in that room and the nature of the piece, um, I, it was able to come through. It wasn't a, it wasn't a total disaster, but yeah, I wasn't thrilled about it. But um, no, we, we bounced around with a whole bunch of different things. And um, I finally found, for all you guitar players, I finally found what I believe is you know the solution um, for playing with uh, louder instruments if you don't want to sound like you're really amplified. And it's this thing called two mic. The two mic, so uh, two M I K. It's here's the little case that it comes in. It's pretty cool. Yeah, and we'll be sure to um, write about that on our blog um, within yeah. the next few days. Yeah, it, but it, it's it's this cool little get the camera angle here. It's this cool little. Uh, it's like a double mic that goes inside your guitar. Mm -hmm. And is that it, the one with the Velcro that you? Yes, there? and there's yeah. there's Velcro on the heel. Yeah, right here. And then you've got the, the cord and that, that plugs into an XLR, which uh, you plug into your, your, your powered speaker, your little powered PA. And um, I'm really excited because they just came out with an, a, a, a wireless version of this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna contact the company and get the, uh, the wireless version of the two yeah. mic, which actually saves a whole bunch because I, I don't like going out and fumbling around with the XLR and plugging it in and all that stuff. I'd like to just mm -hmm. go out and play. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so that, and then um, the amplifier or the PA that I use is, uh, it, it's a kind of hard to find brand, but if you can find it, it's well worth it. It's called LD Systems and it's a German designed uh, speaker, powered speaker. And I, it's the Stinger that I use. And uh, man, oh man, a two mic and an LD Stinger uh, is uh, is the combo you want, and I'll I'll stand by that uh, for the for the rest of my career or until they invent something better. <laughs> yeah, I'll, well, I'll be yeah. happy to put that in the in the chat later on, so you guys can all see what that stuff is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, well, Scott has a lot of these gears on his uh, guitar, but I I don't have to amplify anything. I'm I'm just a really loud instrument so i just play as is no microphone um uh, i guess unless if we have to play at a like an arena or something like that i don't think i um have to amplify myself right. um, no we played at the nam show and you didn't amplify and it wasn't a problem and uh <laughs> the, the nam show is that's a really loud environment oh it's um, so loud it's so loud it's a mm -hmm. guitar center on steroids it, Basically. it's really something yeah. yeah, but although I I am definitely playing much quieter than I would with the pianist, and it's not it's not easy <laughs> to play, um, you know those especially those like things that I want to really put in you know 
emphasis on in the phrasing or something like that um, with less volume. I, it, it takes a lot of um, air support and also um, you, know, you have to really train yourself how to play quietly. And yeah. Yeah. yeah and I, I, I is, it, even though I could, I can play as loud as I want now because of the, 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 the uh, speaker mm. and the microphone. Um, like you said, unless you're playing, you know, outdoors or, you know, in a, in a, a large amphitheater, an arena, something like that. But if you're playing in a concert hall, um, at least for me, that little voice in the back of my head is like, I don't want to sound amplified. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't want to turn it up so loud that it's just unnatural yeah. for the classical guitar in, mm -hmm. in, in a concert hall type settings yeah. right although i, I still meet, feel middle, although scott I, I still feel that i can have a little a little more of you especially when you're when we're performing and that's kind of like the feedback i get from the audience because of course they can hear me <laughs> uh, you yeah. know the most i think, but, we, I think we meet we, we meet in the middle but i'm always resisting turning up and I, I, she always gets <laughs> me to turn up at least two clicks more than i want to and, uh, <laughs> and scott gets annoyed <laughs> yeah, louder no Louder, no. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's it's a delicate instrument. It needs, to sound more. but yeah, yeah but it, that it, microphone is amazing. I'm I'm glad we found that. Yeah, I, I'd yeah. like to thank uh, Kai Narezzo actually for hooking me up with that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's it's a California company, uh, Northern California company. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, he kind of introduced a lot of us here in Southern California to the company. Mm -hmm. don't, don't don't quote me. At least they were. I think the entire LHEQ is using the two mic now. Mm -hmm. um, they had a little cool. demo fitting, and they were impressed. So mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. One and, thing and I very would good say, company. Yeah, one thing I would say for saxophone to play quiet. Of course, practicing makes everything better, but. Um, adjusting your read like finding the right read and also the mouthpiece too i'm playing on a uh, van doren al5 which is slightly a bigger tip opening and people are super impressed like what why are you playing in that setting when 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 it has a slightly you know wider tip opening but for me using um the right read that i'm using which is a, a blue box three and al5 works super great with how I trained myself to do that. Um, but if I were to use um, uh, like number two and a half read or something like that, I'm using three right now, but two and a half, or even a, um, like a large number read, like maybe four or three and a half, I would have a difficult time playing in a smooth, smooth and quietly verse. So I, it took, it took me a while to find the right setup for me. And I am, I'm, I'm fairly satisfied with what I have, but yeah, I'm always yeah. looking for, um, you know, and a uh, best mouthpiece and the reed so that I can play quiet, um, very clear and with the way, with the, with the way, the color I want to. So, yeah, I'm, I'm glad yeah. we, we both found the right setup for our duo. Yeah, no, for sure. Uh oh, Chica, do we lose you? No, you're back. No, I'm here. <laughs> okay. You, you, there was a little spinning circle okay. of depth there for a minute, but, okay. but you're back. Um, okay. So, uh, you know, we're talking about our live setup, but, you know, when we record, yeah. um, it's a little bit of a different setup there as, as well, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. So, and, so those of you uh, who are interested, um, our CD is uh, getting out, released on October 16th, and you will hear the balance of us on the CD quite different. Yay! <laughs> Quite yeah. different from us performing live. And, yeah, um, yeah, that, that, that's right. Um, we, we, yeah, we just did a, a interview with a with a, a, a paper magazine yesterday. Was it yesterday or the day before? It was um, yesterday. Yesterday. No, okay. The day before, I can't. I, you know, just time <laughs> is so. And in true, in full disclosure, I actually forgot. She had to call me. Like, where are you? We're in a we're in a video interview right now. <laughs> like, am I? <laughs> was that today? Uh, but, um, no, we 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 told the 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 journalist, uh, you know, that we play live on the on the record. And there are no overdubs, and 
um, you know, it's all done completely live. And he seemed kind of surprised, I guess he comes from a kind of a rock journalist background. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, you, you want the, the producer that we work with, uh, guy named Nico Bolas, and he, he thinks all studio recordings should sound live. He's, he loves mm. that live sound. And, you know, do you remember in the, in the studio, he actually stood in the room in front of us, yeah. you know, like seriously, three or four feet in front of us with his arms yeah, crossed. Basically the whole time he was standing we didn't play there a note. listening. Yeah, we didn't play a note without him right in front of us. Mm -hmm. That's and, very impressive. Uh, yeah, he, he did the same thing um, you know, back uh, when I did my first solo record with him. He just sat mm -hmm. Indian style on the floor mm -hmm. and had me play. And he said, just mm -hmm. play to me, just play to me. But yeah, you know, you're, you're, you're playing to a person, which takes the, I guess, the sterile kind of nature of, mm -hmm. of being in the studio out of it. But um, again, you know, in the studio, we, we had a little barrier between us. So there's no bleed from her instrument to... Uh, to, to my instrument, which, you know, I think, uh, I think it's important to, 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 especially with chamber music, if you're recording live, I'm really shocked when I hear classical musicians who actually uh, kind of layer their recording, kind of like, like a rock, some rock bands, you know, you'll put down the drums first, you know, maybe bass, mm -hmm. you know, put the guitar, guitar on top, once everything's done, you know, the singer comes in, or maybe they came in before they did a scratch track, and they're going to replace it later and mm -hmm. things like that for, for classical music and, and jazz and, you know, things where you're, you know, there's a lot of, you know, push and pull, um, you know, to not be playing together live. I think you're really missing out. It's going to come off very, very stale, I think. Yeah. Um, one, one, one question um, that uh, we got before we did this was uh, what do you do when there's a disagreement? <laughs> you're playing with others. <laughs> Yeah, we we wouldn't we wouldn't know. We never disagree. Um, you're gonna have to ask yeah? a different. <laughs> no. So, so uh, see, I'm not the only one who's red right now. That's that's good. Um, so yeah, what what do you do, um, Chica, when you're when you're playing with a musician? And you know, it doesn't have to be a you know, I don't like you, I don't like you either. Kind of disagreement. It could just be. Mm -hmm. I just don't like how you're playing this. <laughs> I, you know, I just don't hear it that way. I, I don't see, you know, that's the wrong tempo. It's the wrong feel. It's just, you know, I don't hear it that way. So what do you do? Um, I'm, I'm so lucky and fortunate that you, you usually um, are very helpful and listen to my comment <laughs> and kind of uh, try with my idea <laughs> first. I'm, I'm all about conflict avoidance. So. <laughs> so I'm very appreciative of that because I'm very opinionated. <laughs> it could be very opinionated. What? Um, what? <laughs> no? <laughs> I didn't notice. I... No, it, well, it, it... well, I think we, we both discuss things very uh, clearly, you know, what we, what we know and what we feel and what, how, how, you feel how I feel, and we can put all that on one table and discuss about it. Um, and I'm very fortunate we we can do that as a duo, yeah. and um, without you know hurting anybody's feelings. I guess we can well, very be honest with each other. I I guess that you know I I like to say you can say anything to anybody if you say it the right way. Um, <laughs> And, you know, it, it, there's a way to say something, even if it's something critical, um, that doesn't have to come off as sounding critical. It doesn't have to sound insulting. It doesn't have to sound belittling or, you know, demeaning. Um, you know, it's, it's, I think what makes a good, you know, collaboration, what makes a good partnership is feeling free to bring your idea to the table without fear that, you know, you're gonna, you know, get into an argument about it. Yeah, like or, hurting know. other, hurting other person's feelings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, any, any, any creative collaborative environment, um, you need to feel like you can say what you're thinking um, without, you know, fear of 
retaliation of, of some <laughs> kind. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm, again, I'm not naming names, but I've worked with some very colorful personalities in the past. And, uh, you know, I, I, I always just, hmm, okay, <laughs> I'll let that one go. Um, but, uh, you know, everybody's, everybody's got a different personality and, um, you know, you just can't, you can't be overly sensitive, um, mm -hmm. for sure, but, you yeah. know, you shouldn't be overly, uh, overbearing, um, at the same time. Mm -hmm. Um, you gotta, you gotta find some way to, uh, to, to get along because, you know, you, you are playing with others and, you know, you're on a team and, you know, if, if you're being a, you know, difficult person to be on a team with, you know, maybe, maybe they're not going to want to be on your team anymore. Yeah. And we're both very respectful of each other. And we, you know, you know, uh, it's, it's, yeah, like you said, well, we're very. Well, I think, I think it's being professional as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's, it's great. Um, it's great when you're friends with the people you play with. Um, but it, it's okay just to be professional and friendly with the people that you play with. Mm. Um, you know, you don't, just cause you're playing with somebody doesn't mean you have to be best buddies or something like that. You know, I think a lot of, a lot of people, you know, especially, you know, like guitar players, you know, you grew up playing in bands in high school and you're all best friends and you hang out together, things like that. Mm. Um, but, uh, you know, when, when you're at this stage in your career, the, the most important thing is to be professional and, you know, come, come to rehearsal prepared. Don't waste anybody's time. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Know your parts, mm -hmm. uh, you know, contribute, uh, say things in a professional way. Don't, don't be childish or juvenile about it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, if, if you do those things, you're, you're, you're likely to have a pretty good longevity in your, mm -hmm. in your in your project um yeah. also word gets out um you know that you're you're a good person to work with so if somebody's looking for a musician for a session or mm -hmm. something like that mm -hmm. um you know people want to work with people they like no, nobody wants to call that person that they can't stand um mm -hmm. for that session because i promise you especially in a place like los angeles or new york <laughs> or you know uh london um <laughs> you're not the only one i mean that mm -hmm. that that uh call sheet's going to be pretty deep that right. call list is going to be pretty deep and and you know very few people can get away with being a total jerk mm -hmm. and still work mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I, some of the most yeah. i know some very talented people and nobody will work with them just because they're so <laughs> so problematic on so many levels <laughs> so yeah mm -hmm. if you can show up get it done be professional yeah. um mm -hmm. and uh you know make it all feel good yeah, uh, it's, hard to feel, it's hard to feel creative when you're mad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sometimes a great creativity comes when you're doing nothing, isn't it? <laughs> oh, yeah. When you're relaxed uh, and not doing, not not touching the instrument, not, I mean, of course, it come, creativity comes when playing too, but. Um, yeah, like, like yeah, when I'm sitting great in my favorite chair watching golf on Sunday, you know, and somebody walks in the room, what are you doing? I'm being creative. Um, <laughs> no, <laughs> but you know, seriously though, I mean, you, 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 when you, when you, when you can kind of turn off your brain, um, that's when things usually come to you. Mm. Um, I read a great quote from Steve Vai just today. I can't remember it, but it was something like that. You know, you kind of have to turn off your brain mm. in order to be receptive to creativity. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's, um, uh, it's true. It's really true. Or I think what Sati. Eric Satie, one of my favorite composers, um, said uh, the creative process looks a whole lot like boredom. <laughs> How interesting! Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I yeah, guess yeah. the easy the easy burn there is like, and your music shows it. But uh, <laughs> <you know. laughs> I like Satie. <laughs> I love Satie. I, my last my last solo record was all Eric Satie. That's right. And, uh, yeah. Oh, and, well, actually, it wasn't all solo, was it? Um, I, I, I did record a guitar duo there with Andrew York. Mm. And, um, you know, that was quite the experience, just, you know, just talking about playing music with others. You know, Andrew York mm. has been one of my heroes for, you know, decades um, before, before I knew him. Mm. And, uh, you know, great composer, you know, such a creative person. Um, you know, played with the Los Angeles Guitar Quartet for 20 plus years. Um, 
and uh, yeah, to 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 put that that piece together with them, and then and then record it, uh, yeah. the, you know, the way we did, was such a learning process. Um, what he said to me in the recording session, he said, "Oh no, we were rehearsing at his house." He said, uh, "He said, man, yeah, it sounds it sounds great. We're we're all together, but but don't focus on the beginning of the note. Focus on the end of every note." He's what? What are you talking about? Mm -hmm. And uh, we kept we kept doing that, and uh, it it. I don't know. It all made perfect sense um, mm -hmm. after after just a minute or two. But mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, so again, you know, play play with people that make you better. And mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm a, I'm fortunate enough to be able to play with people like Chica and Andrew York and you know people like that. But uh, you know, it, it, you know, wherever you are in your musical journey, whether you're you know a teenager, you know, you know, still just kind of coming into your own or a college student or a, mm -hmm. you know, an older enthusiast who just likes to play, you know, for, for fun. Um, you know, you should definitely find other people to play with. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. It, yeah. It, and you you'll know, learn so much out of it. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's like, it's like if, if you're really into tennis and all you ever do is hit off a ball machine, you know, <laughs> you're not getting it, you know, you need to find someone to play with. It becomes so mm -hmm. much more dynamic. Mm -hmm. You get so much more out of it. Mm -hmm. Um, so uh, I think we've, we've just got a few minutes um, yeah. to talk about next week. Yeah. Um, so next next week we're going to be talking about what do we say, Scott? We are going to be talking about how to grow or expand or reach um, people outside of the classical music world. So mm -hmm. um, how how do classical musicians, um, composers um groups expand the audience beyond mm -hmm. the traditional classical audience mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. i've heard a lot about um i've heard a lot about uh orchestras who feel very much worried because their audience is of a certain age and they're not seeing younger mm -hmm. people come in mm -hmm. in a lot of places and they're worried mm -hmm. about the future of those organizations so um yeah. you know or or just for us just for us, um, what are we uh, doing to, you know, go outside of that classical world? Um, right. You know, I, I, it, I, with the I, yeah, with the with an instrument that's known as a jazz instrument, jazz or pop mu instrument, and like guitar that's known as like a rock and you know, a cool. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> instrument. Um, we come together and playing classical music. So, um, yeah, that's a very cool topic to talk about. And all yeah, and I, I, I hope it'll be really you know interactive um, as far as uh, you know getting getting people watching involved because um, it's important. I, I think, and I, I know some people are they're they're very. Um, some people I know, not everybody, it's not a, not a general statement, but some people I know, they're very sort of like, well, well, you don't, you know, classical music doesn't come to you. You have to come to it. And, you know, a lot of these are sort of like, oh, you really um, kind of uh, statements. And, uh, you know, it sounds like somebody trying to impress somebody at a coffee house somewhere, I guess. But um, but yeah, I, I think expanding the audience is something I know Chica and I are very much interested in. Um, you know, we, we, we want nothing more than to play for, you know, large general audiences. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I, 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 I think uh, reaching as many people as possible with your music should be uh, the goal of, of, every, of every musician. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to compromise yourself and just play, you know, cheesy, you know, hits. To, to do which that. which I see all the time, in, yeah. in saxophone yeah. or even in guitar or in any instruments, I think it feels. Yeah. So how, so that's what we're going to be talking about. You know how to how to maintain your integrity as a as a musician. Um, although you know most of us, if we're being honest, if you had a chance to really sell out, you wouldn't a heartbeat. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know the, the great line from Gene Simmons. You know it's like people say mm -hmm. we're sellouts, and I say, yep, every night we play. Mm -hmm. um so uh yeah but great so, so uh, we have yeah we have few comments uh that was posted thank you marco he was my saxophone student a while ago and you have your friend tony romack scott and oh, 
I must yeah. be looking at the wrong page. I'm not seeing comments on this and, particular <laughs> And Kevin is saying that um, he's been, on, it's been on his wish list, the, uh, the two mic. Mm -hmm. um, and glad to hear it's working out. Javier, saludos. Um, and Javier, what are you saying? Um, he's asking, do you guys believe that playing popular music would enrich your musicianship, musicianship and the other way around? Training classically would make you better at playing popular music. I think we're going to talk about that next week, definitely. Yeah, 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 for, for sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, there is the, if you can play classical music, you can play anything thing, but I, trust me, I know classical players, they can't play anything. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, um, yeah, I think that's a topic for next week. And I, I mm -hmm. think it's um, about just becoming as diverse a musician as you can be and everything right. you can bring to you as an artist you can, you can yeah. learn from. Yeah. So thank you um, for the question, Javier. We're going to be um, talking about that, uh, the question you asked next week. Okay. Okay, next, great. Next week we'll wear cool hats and leather jackets and everything just to, you know, kind of. Is it getting? Well, <laughs> it's it's kind of getting chilly in Japan, which is really not chilly, but it, it's good, really good weather here. No, yeah, I think Osaka, it was uh, hundred degrees in LA today. Oh my. Yeah, but yeah. you know, at least the smoke's gone, so it doesn't look That's like a blood. But it's still burning, here. right? Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. It, it depends on where you live. It, it yeah. definitely is. But mm -hmm. I checked Twitter today, and San Andreas was trending number one, which didn't make me feel very good. So <laughs> we're we're currently having a little earthquake swarm. So oh wow, uh, that'll be yeah. disastrous. <laughs> ah, yeah, we've been through it all. Whatever. It, it, okay. It's fine. That, that's why you leave your guitar in a case at night. Yeah. 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 There's a pro tip for you people. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. So, all righty. We'll so, see you next week. We'll see you next week. Bye.